Do you find yourself getting frustrated with some of your cuts on your CNC router around your lettering or cleanup surfaces where they're uneven, there's burrs, and it just doesn't look good and you don't know what's wrong? Well, there's a very specific reason this is happening. It's because of the down bit and the way it's set up. Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I am so glad you've come to this video because you are going to learn the mechanics of the down bit for CNC routers. Yes, there is an engineering level that once you get, you're gonna know what's going on with your projects when they come out and you're going, why, is, why are my surfaces uneven? Why do the, the lines around the letters show up? Why am I getting so many witness marks? There's a science behind it and you're about to learn it. In fact, when most people, most CNC router owners don't get this, just because they don't understand it at this level. So you're gonna be like at the top 0.1% of knowledge where you can pass this on to other CNC router owners. Now the first half of this video is gonna discuss up bits versus down bits. It's the second half where you're gonna start getting the big aha moments. So you wanna stick with this video all the way through. And by the time you're done, you'll know exactly how to set up your projects to avoid this problem in the first place. So let's just dive right on in and get you educated to that like engineering level of CNC routing. Let's go. So let's start right off at the beginning. What is a down cut bit? For all intents and purposes on a CNC router, a down cut bit is a side cutting end mill designed to profile out around items like this letter N and to clear out material as you can see it's starting to do right now there are two types of side cutters typically that do this they're called end mills one is an up bit and the other is a down bit so let's look at the difference this is a down bit when it rotates you can see the spirals are going downward whereas an up bit when it rotates the spirals are going upward there's a distinct difference here. The up bit actually pulls the material upward and is making a cut in the upward direction. And that leaves a burr on the side of the cut at the very top. Whereas the down bit, when it's cutting, is cutting in a down direction. So at the top of the cut, it leaves it clean. But there's one other thing I want you to notice. On the up bit, at the very bottom, there's a cutting blade right here and right here. The up bit is actually shaving the bottom of the cut at the same time, whereas the down bit does not have a cutting edge on the bottom. In fact, the bottom of the down bit is going backwards. So when it's rotating, it's actually trying to screw itself out of the material. By virtue of the forces here, it wants to lift up and the reverse spiral <clears throat> and the reverse spiral on the flute. And what that does is that actually pulls the bit up out of the material. The down bit wants to pull it down a bit, however it's got the bottom cut and therefore won't do that so much. Here's an example of the difference. This first cut is with a down bit. And the next one, this one, is an up bit. Now, if you look at the cuts up close, the one on the right is with the down bit. You can see that the corners are very clean and you don't have to sand them. Whereas with the up bit, the corners are rough. You are going to have to sand some wood away from that one. Now there is one other distinguishing difference that I want you to take notice of. If you look at the slot on the right with the down cut bit at the bottom and compare it to the bottom of the slot on the left, you're going to see that they are at two different heights. It's actually quite distinctive. If we look at it from the end, it becomes very clear. So we're going to measure these two. Now this board I actually cut another slot into before I uh, took it off. But we are going to measure 
the left, the right one first, the one with the down bit. And the depth is 0.24 inches. Now, if we measure the left one, the one with the upcut bit, and just avoid the burr, we have a depth of 0.285 inches. Very distinct difference. So basically what's going on is the direction of the corkscrew of the cutting blades or the flutes is actually mechanically pushing or pulling the bit in one direction or the other. So an upcut bit is actually trying to draw itself into the material, whereas a downcut bit is trying to push itself out of the material. Now, how does that translate more into the finish work of your project? Well, you've noticed on your projects that some areas will be nice and smooth, other areas will have these little steps and they'll go down and, and, and you'll get the little burrs along there. Well, that's because of your tool offset or the step over function that you're using. When the router bit is first making its cut, it is cutting 100% diameter of the bit through the slot, like the example I showed you before. But if you have, say, a 40% step over, that next cut, it's only cutting 40% of the material, and what's going to happen is it's not going to pull itself down nearly as hard. And because of that, you're going to end up with a step just like that. So we're going to try to describe it this way. Let's pretend that this is a job. and We are in my vector software, by the way. And this here is a slot being cut in the wood. This arrow is indicating the direction that the router bit is moving the down cut. Now remember the down cut wants to push itself upward. Well as it's making its cut on the first pass it is literally cutting the full 180 diameter of the router bit. So you have all that surface that's trying to push the router bit up. Now when you come into your step over passes let's say you have a 50 percent step over half the diameter of the router bit right here. Now we're only working with 90 degrees of the bit or a quarter of the bit and because there's not nearly as much upward pressure the router bit is going to relax down a bit and what you're going to end up with is a line right along here where this area is sitting higher than this area. Now let's say the router bit comes back through again with a 25% step over and now it's over here. That's less pressure there plus there's much less material on the bottom so this router bit is going to relax almost down to its full depth. So you're going to show another step going on right here and this area is going to be the deepest this will be the second and this will be the shallowest right here if you took it and looked at it on the side basically it's going to look like this in the bottom of your cut where this area was the first slot and this would have been from the step over and this would have been where there was almost no resistance at the bottom or on the side so this is why you're getting all kinds of weird cuts on your projects, particularly around letters, when you're doing offset and it's tracing the letters. Okay, well, I just want to stop for a second and ask you if you feel like the information I'm giving you is giving you some aha moments as to maybe why your projects aren't turning out quite the way you want. Maybe give me a thumbs up. That tells me that I am giving you the right information to make you a little bit better. Actually, this is intended to make you a lot better. And if you're brand new to this kind of stuff, still trying to figure it all out, well, subscribe to the channel. And if you're really stuck, you can always set up an appointment with me. We will do a one-on-one -on -one get you like out of that stuck place and move you further along. Also, when it comes to router bits, I got tired of dealing with the big boys and the real expensive bits and the cheap ones off Amazon. So I source my own now. And if you're interested in a nice set 
that's built for like the CNC beginner. It's got everything. There's a link down below and individual bits as well. So, yeah, check it out. Huh. You are getting some deep dive information here. I mean, this is engineering level stuff. <laughs> and almost no CNC out there gets this. It just doesn't register just because they don't know. But now you do, you can pass on that information as well. Anyway, we got to get back into this so you can get on your next project and make it nice and clean. All right, let's go. So let's talk about how to stop that. I'm going to show you in the software here. This is Vectric, particularly VCarve and your software will in some way shape or form have this where you have a finish pass so what we're going to do is go over our toolpath function and i'm going to close that and so let's just pretend we'll just pick this item right there it doesn't matter and what we're going to do is do a pocket so i've got to stop and tell you this this happens when you are doing surfaces where you're making multiple passes over a surface. So if you're doing a surfacing cut or any kind of pocket cut, this is where this happens at. And you'll see that from now on. <laughs> it's always happening in pockets, around letters, uh, curves, anything where you're doing multiple passes over the same like area where the tool's just gone past. So, all right, let's get back to this. So in this pocket, we are set up for a depth of 0.1 inches using a quarter inch end mill. And this is a, uh, a down cut. Now it says here we have one pass. And what it's going to do, it's going to pocket out this entire project right here if it was all one vector. But it's, you're not going to see it in this example. It only shows up in the actual project. So, but we're just going to pretend that this is the project and we're going to pocket out this area here. So it's going to make one pass. It's going to go down. It's going to do all its cuts and you're going to see different elevations at the bottom of this job and there's going to be rough areas. There's going to be okay areas. The way that you fix this is go into your tool path. In this case we're going to go to edit. I'm sorry, we are going to go to the edit the passes and we are going to set a last pass thickness. So we're going to set that thickness actually quite thin. We're going to go to a 0 0.007. So you want to set it to maybe a 0 0.005 to a 0 0.01. And what that'll do is when I apply, you'll see here in the software, it actually created a second tool path. So it's telling me what the depth of the first cut is and the final depth. And you can see that final depth is a very thin cut. The reason, what this will do is it's going to shave off all the extra material. There's going to have no resistance from the side cutting action. And therefore, it'll be able to make a nice smooth cut along the bottom. Now, some people may not like doing that because it doubles the time, but this is the way to stop this from happening. Now, you can do other things too, like adjust your stepovers, make them a little bit smaller, but you're not going to get this effect if you adjust the step over in your single roughing or single tool path if you want to do it in one shot. Because at some point around your project, you are going to have less pressure and it's going to go down so if you were to go into try to do that i would probably set up your step over to 80 percent or 90 percent but that's not going to work because you're going to leave some other tool marks called witness marks you want to do a second pass always and make that second pass thin and you will have a much better finish at the bottom of your projects and that's what we're doing on this sign here we are cleaning it up with a very shallow cut. This is a 0 .07. You can see it's just taking out a little bit of material. But the key is there is no side pressure on the tool. So all pressure is equal at the bottom of the router bit. And so we get a nice clean surface all the way around. We have a little bit of witness mark from the router bit. But overall, it's very clean. A little bit going on inside of the sea. That's because of the tool path, so you may want to raster it. 
we're looking quite good. I'm very happy with this. Okay, well, do me a favor. Leave a comment of the big aha moment that you just got out of this. And I'm really curious. And also, of course, like it if you felt like this was useful. And router bits, I've got them. And one-on-one. -on -one. If you really just want to get some one-on-one -on -one training to take you to the next level, you don't have to be stuck. You just want to get there faster. It's like drinking hard liquor versus drinking uh, light beer, you know. We'll do some one-on-one. -on -one. You can set that up down below, and um, yeah, that's it. All right, go make a cool project, and give me a comment, and give me a like, and have an awesome day doing this amazing, creative CNC stuff. I love doing this, and I love teaching you. All right, this is Garrett, and I'll talk to you next time.